SAP HANA is fully designed for high availability. It supports recovery measures ranging from faults and software errors to, de to disasters that decommission an entire data center. SAP HANA offers three levels of disaster recovery support, backup, storage replication and system replication. Let's come to backup storage. SAP HANA uses in-memory technology and it provides full persistence for any transaction that changes the data like row insertions, deletions and updates. You can resume from a power outage without any loss of data. SAP HANA persists two types of data to storage, transaction redo logs and data changes in the form of save points. A transaction redo log is used to record a change whereas a save point is a periodic point in time when all the change data is written to storage in the form of pages. Save points are also used to speed up restart that is when starting up the system logs need to be processed from the beginning but only from the last save point position. In normal scenario default save points are performed every 5 minutes but this can be configured. Save points normally overwrite older save points but you can also freeze a save point for future use. This is called a snapshot. Let's move on to storage replication. One of the disadvantage of backups is the potential loss of data between the time of the last backup and the time of the failure. A preferred solution therefore is to provide continuous replication of all persisted data. Storage replication is provided by various SAP HANA hardware partners that offer a storage level replication solution. In this, a backup of the volumes or file system is delivered to a remote networked storage system. Now, in a system replication approach, you set up a system replication so that a secondary standby system is configured as an exact copy of the active primary system with the same number of active hosts in each system. The number of standby hosts need not be the same. With multi-tier system app replication, you have one primary system and can have multiple secondary systems as you can see here. When the secondary system is started in recovery mode, each service component establishes a connection with its counterpart and requests a snapshot of the data in the primary system. After that, all logged changes in the primary system are replicated. Whenever logs are persisted in the primary system, they are also sent to the secondary system. A transaction in the primary system is not committed until the logs are replicated. So these are the methods used for disaster recovery.